In the Sky interview now, we talk to young British director Danny Boyle, whose first movie was the smash hit Shallow Grave. His second is going to be even bigger. The novel by Irvin Welsh is already a cult, and now everyone is talking about the movie version of Train Spotting. Choose life, choose a job, choose a career, choose a family, choose washing machines, cars, compact displays, and electrical tin openers. We always knew it wouldn't have a really kind of a big story like Shallow Grave, but we decided there, were two, there seemed to be like two options. You can either make a film like Shortcuts, the Altman film, where you just let each character take over sections and, and somehow try and knit it all together, which is the shape of the book, really. Or we did, but we decided, in fact, we wanted to follow one character. <laughs> Renton's, uh, he's hooked on smack when we find him at the beginning of the story. And then he comes off it and on it and off it and on it twice, maybe three times. And uh, he's kind of the uh, thinker. He thinks about everything, and, and we hear a lot, most of his thoughts through voiceover. Relinquishing junk, stage one, preparation. For this, you will need one room which you will not leave, soothing music. Tomato soup, 10 tins off. Mushroom soup, 8 tins off for consumption cold. Ice cream, vanilla, one large tub off. Magnesia, milk off, one bottle. Paracetamol, mouthwash, vitamins, mineral water, leucoside, pornography. One mattress, one bucket for urine, one for feces and one for vomitus. One television and one bottle of Valium, which I've already procured from my mother, who is, in her own domestic and socially acceptable way, also a drug addict. People forget the reasons why people get into, into drugs and such like. Um, you know, it's for their own benefit. It's not, it's not, to, uh, it's not to, to stick two fingers up at anyone else particularly, you know? The downside of coming off junk was I knew I would need to mix with my friends again in a state of full consciousness. It was awful. They reminded me so much of myself I could hardly bear to look at them. Take Sick Boy, for instance. He came off junk at the same time as me, not because he wanted to, you understand, but just to annoy me, just to show me how easily he could do it, thereby downgrading my own struggle. Something Irvin said, I just thought was quite nice, is, I mean, he likes this script for the, the film. Did he call it uh, Carry On Train Spotting? Which I thought was quite apt, like, because it is, it's the good for the, the good for the humour. We decided to highlight the comic side for the first 30 minutes of the film. And it certainly is. It, it's like that. We decided to actually that we would make it just great fun, really, to begin with. And you lure people in. And there's a very serious reason for doing that. Because, you know, the reason people take drugs is because they have a good time. They don't take drugs to kill themselves, which is one of the common fallacies that's around that we all kind of access to and, and sort of passively agree with, really. And it's nonsense, because everybody knows that people do drugs to, to have a great time, and they do have a great time. Do you have a preconceived idea of a smack addict as someone without any humour or without any spirit or soul? Or, and then you read the script and the book, and they're full of them. They're full of all of them. All I am trying to do, Mark, is to help you understand that the name of the rose is merely a blip on an otherwise uninterrupted downward trajectory. And what about the untouchables? I don't rate that at all. Despite the Academy Award. That means all. Oh, it's a sympathy vote. We wanted to try and capture, and it's something he captures in the book, which is the life that's there before heroin begins to take it away. And it's like he says in the book, heroin, it gives life and it takes it away. And we wanted to just capture the energy that these people have, you know, in their 20s, you know, and that's there, the potential that's there. And it's distorted and they just shoot dogs in the park and you know, all those kind of crazy things that you do. Give me the gun. Do you see the beast? Have you got it in your sight? Clear enough, Mitch Moneypenny. This should present no significant problems. The film was made very truthfully and very honestly, and we didn't want to. We, we, we just wanted to do this amazing book, and, and now it's become something in the media that's about, you know, drugs campaign here and kind of personalities here, and and it 
and, and, then, and also newspapers battling over when they're going to run copies of you know, interviews and things like that and, and, and who's going to get magazine covers and, it's, and it distorts it really and, and the, the film was really, the real reason the film was made, really, really, was when we went to see the guys at Carlton Athletic and you watch those guys struggling with their, their past heroin addiction, they're struggling with it day by day as they give up and they struggle on with their lives, ordinary working class people from Glasgow and you, that's why you make the film because you try and actually, you know, you look at that life continuing like that and you, and it's, there's something honest and, and, and wor worthwhile about it, you know, about that struggle to continue. Choose your friends, choose your future, choose life. Yeah. What are you waiting for? This is not natural, man. It's a great outdoors. 